Rutgers Al, and this is the 2011 Rutgers Al Rutgers Football Preview. I'm excited because we're going to make history this season for a couple of reasons. First, we've increased our talent immensely, adding significant talent to the offense, the defense, the special teams, the coaching staff, and most importantly, the stands. Ooh, la la. Secondly, the guys have worked extremely hard. They've trained hard to be in the best shape possible, and they look great. Lastly, we've got significant experience, especially on the offensive and defensive line, as all starters are either in their junior or senior years. Add it all up, and to me, it adds up to a Big East championship. Let's get on to the preview. Frank Zignetti is the new offensive coordinator, and with him, we finally have a strong compliment to Greg Schiano on the offensive side of the ball. He had great offenses at Fresno State, California, and Pittsburgh, and there's no reason why he can't have a great offense at Rutgers, given our amazing array of weapons. Can't wait to see what he does with them. Brian Angelicchio is the new tight ends coach, and he previously produced NFL draft picks Nate Byam and Doran Dickerson. Our tight ends should be much improved given his previous results. Jeff Halfley is the new defensive backs coach, but he's already made his mark on the recruiting trail, helping Rutgers to land some of New Jersey's best. Rutgers won't go lacking for talent in upcoming years, and Jeff Halfley is one of the reasons why. Mohamed Superman Sanu should be one of college football's best wide receivers. He was Rutgers' second leading wide receiver in 2009. In 2010, he was banged up, but this year, he should be Rutgers' leading wide receiver as the quarterbacks love to throw to him. Not only is he an effective wide receiver, he's also an effective blocker on running plays. Missile Mark Harrison was Rutgers' leading wide receiver last year. It's almost impossible for defensive backs to cover him because he's got good height as well as reach. Mark should have another strong season this year. Wide receiver Brandon Coleman had a terrific first game, hooking up on a long touchdown pass from Gary Nova. He should have a great career at Rutgers and should also ultimately become a superstar because it's impossible for defensive backs to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Can't wait to see what the future holds for him. Miles Supersonic Schuler could remind fans of Rahib the Rocket Ishmael. He has blazing speed. Quarterback Chase Dodd had an impressive freshman campaign, throwing for over 1,600 yards with 11 touchdowns versus 7 interceptions. Chase generally makes good decisions and few mistakes. This year, he could throw for close to 3,000 yards as long as he gets the protection. Fullback Joe Martinick has always done whatever the coaches have asked of him. This year, he moves to fullback, which could be his ticket to the NFL. He should be effective blocking, catching passes out of the backfield, as well as runs up the gut. Paul Carrizola is the starting tight end, and he did a nice job against UNC Central. D.C. Jefferson is a tight end with NFL potential. Running back DeAntoine Williams has improved considerably since coming to Rutgers, especially his blocking. I look for him to have a big impact this season. Running back Savon Huggins has future superstar, 
tattooed on his forehead. Not only does he have tremendous instincts, he can't be brought down by arm tackles. I'm confident that one day he will lead Rutgers to the Big East title, hopefully this season. Right tackle Desmond Stapleton is our best returning offensive lineman. He is all around solid and is going to try to follow in the footsteps of his brother who played in the NFL. Antoine Bonecrusher Lowry is probably the most talented of our offensive linemen. Not only is he exceptionally strong, he also moves very well for a big guy. Defenders found out last game that once he gets his paws on you, it's good night, Irene. Center David Ossie had a strong game against UNC Central. Not only did he do a good job snapping, he also was effective in getting to the second level to knock off defenders. He could be our best center since Darnell Stapleton. Senior Desmond Wynn is the left guard, and he was doing a nice job till he fell down with an injury last week against UNC Central. Hope he comes back soon. Left guard Betim Bujari did an excellent job filling in for Desmond Wynn last game. He can pull, he can trap, and he can also get to the second level to knock linebackers into next year. He also showed a mean streak knocking a defender on his rear end. He looks to be a good one. Andre Civil came to Rutgers as a defensive end and is now a solid left tackle, up to 275 pounds. He is nimble and athletic and looks ready to protect the quarterback from dangerous defensive ends. Big Art Force plays on the special teams units like the field goal unit, and he's also a reserve guard as well as center. Lineman Caleb Johnson had one of the best recruiting highlight tapes I've ever seen. He reminds me a lot like Anthony Davis. I was hoping we could redshirt him, but he may be just too good not to play. The Rutgers defense is led by defensive tackle Scott Vallone, who looked like Dominica Sue and Nick Fairley against NC Central, notching two sacks and a fumble recovery for a touchdown. Justin Francis is the other defensive tackle, and with Scott Vallone, they form one of the best tackle combos in college football. He's off to a fast start this year with two sacks against NC Central. Can't wait to see what he does against UNC's big offensive line. Defensive end Mike Laro is a star in the making. He had a sack against Louisville last year and got off to a good start this year with a sack against UNC Central. Can't wait to see what he does against UNC's huge tackles. Defensive end Marvin Booker has waited a long time to play. He got his chance against NC Central, where he started that game. Manny Abreu was moved from linebacker to defensive end to help get more speed on the field. Khalil Gloud is an example of another linebacker who has been moved to defensive end. He looked comfortable out there against UNC Central, notching two sacks. As the season progresses, he'll only get better. Steve Boharnis returns to middle linebacker this year. He looked good against NC Central and should go on to a solid year. Kasim Green moves to weak side linebacker from safety this year. Not only does he have great hitting ability, but he has good cover skills as well. His presence on the linebacking core has made the Rutgers defense seem a lot faster. Strong side linebacker Jamal Merrill was very active against NC Central. He has great instincts, smarts, and brings quickness to the position. His development helped Rutgers shift some of its linebackers to defensive end. 
This is freshman linebacker Quentin Gauss. I don't know if he'll play this year, but I do know he has a firm handshake, a bright future, and a million-dollar smile. Senior David Rowe moves to safety after doing a nice job at corner. He brings great coverage ability along with hard hitting. He should be playing Sundays next year. Safety Deron Harmon is probably the most instinctive Rutgers defender since Devron Thompson. He does a great job in reading his pre-snap keys and then being in the proper position to make a play as he did against UNC Central and ended up with two interceptions. He reminds me of Ed Reed and Sean Taylor and he's going to have a great career here at Rutgers. Cornerback Logan Ryan started for the first time against NC Central. He looked great, and I can't wait to see what he does against North Carolina's wide receivers. Brandon Jones is the other corner, and he also looks solid against NC Central. He should go on to a great career at Rutgers. Before we go, I just want to note that San San T is the kicker and Justin Dorner is the punter. After overlooking all our talent, I can't help but think we have the best talent in the Big East. Looking forward to a great season. Go Rutgers and best wishes.